video about the nine bikes that we got from Barber Vintage Festival in Alabama a few weeks back. We picked up nine bikes and each of them now has went kind of different paths. Some of them we've sold, some of them we've fixed and got running, some of them are still hanging out, um, but we just wanted to just give an overview of what's going on with all of them. And also, we actually ended up picking up three more bikes, so now we have 12 bikes total, and we just kind of give a little brief overview of the three that we picked up and where they came from. What we have is a problem. <laughs> it's a definite problem. It's Biketoberfest here for us. <laughs> all these are picked up, so 12 bikes, all in October. It's been crazy. Also, the there is two captions in the video. Both of them say view the rest of this video on live stream. So what we did is when we were at the Northeast Georgia Swap Meet, we took some of the bikes with us and we worked on them there. The main thing was number seven and number eight, the Kawasaki Croft Rocket. We took the yeah, bikes. Yeah, it's the X500. Sorry. We took the bikes, all their parts, and we put them together on a live stream and got it running. And you'll see the like the footage that's missing in there. It says go check out live stream video number one. So that's in the live videos folder. It's not in the regular videos folder. If you want to go check that out, it shows us working on the bikes in real time at Swap Me. Which is terribly boring. But you go watch it anyway. <laughs> so without further ado, enjoy our video. Or not. But <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Please like and subscribe. The first thing I'm going to address is this broken intake boot. I think I have some over here on this spare cylinder head for a 450. I don't know if it's the same as a 350, but we're about to find out. Though we're not messing around with the safety wire on this thing, I was trying to extract this T, and there's safety wire under the hose clamps. You can see this one's still under there. There's also safety wire on the oil cap. And safety wire around this. And safety wire around these. And here and everywhere else but on a positive note the throttle cables are freed up so and i got an intake boot on so we're about to see if this thing will run well i went through my shelf of goodies and i found a kicker that clears the controls I can hook my rear brake back up and have my peg down kicker clears perfect and it tucks away nicely there it's perfect i'm working on the clutch cable and I found me a handle for it, and I can almost get the cable slid into it. My uh, stash of parts for a random crusty motorcycle builds is pretty extreme. I have any cable adjustment on this end. Nearest maximum difference, none, but I need very little. Beautiful. Sure somebody somewhere is angry because I'm messing with the aesthetics of the bike. But I'm gonna ride this thing. And I don't know what else to do.
set up at the Northeast Georgia three-day show here in Clarksville at the fairgrounds. We got all of our stuff mostly set up earlier and now, I'll flip this around, we're working on unloading the crates of stuff that we got from Barber to see what we have so that we can build this bike this weekend. We are going to make this pile of parts be a bike. This frame has a title, that one does not, so we're building this one, not that one. That's a barge bike. Even though it looks like a, it's already ready to go it's it's not it's ready to be disassembled yes <laughs> so thursday is pretty much set up day here there are a good bit of vendors so far um, more will be trickling in throughout the day today as well as tomorrow it was a little rainy this morning so it kept a couple of different people in but the sun is coming out and it's going to be beautiful weather for the next two days so this show should fill up. Yeah, I'm gonna keep filling this way. I don't know. I've never. I have worked on crotch rockets exactly none. We've worked on one or two crotch rockets. I've never had one too. Ooh, hardware. Yay. Oh man. I got nuts and bolts. I saw another bag of hardware over there too. Hardware is the one thing I was worried about not having. And it Somebody, looks as if I have quite a bit of hardware. Somebody did a fairly decent job bagging and tacking. Yeah, they did. Better than I would have done. <laughs> that if we can go to any kind of swap meets especially if we're staying and we can put something together or work on it in the meantime or at night or in between people it gives us something to do but it also gives us something to sell so that we can make money Mitsubishi. stay at swap meet for the next couple of nights. Mattress is blown up. The lights are all installed on. Got the chair in here. And all of our stuff organized. So we are almost ready to tuck in for the night. I'm currently in the process of stripping down the parts bike because I need all the parts off this one to go on the other bike. Except for the fact that the other bike has all nice parts and these parts are all crappy so what i really need is all the bolts from this one yay so what all have you got done uh, most of the bikes took apart i was trying to find the master lane doesn't seem to exist i get 
<laughs> I can't hold that bike up. <laughs> I can't either. <laughs> can you take like, me to get on it? <laughs> what bike are we talking about? The Yamaha. Yeah, big one. It ain't that bad. <laughs> Grab that one. Scary. That's fun. That was you fun. can ride it. I really don't care if you want to ride it. Rock and roll. Where's the little Peugeot? <laughs> He's easy to ride too. I thought about riding this one. <laughs> I want one. I ain't even gonna lie. I need the swing arm. I guess the thing is I need the swing arm and all of the suspension. Pop your head up for a second. A second seat. We'll make this the cover feature. So I've almost got the parts bike completely stripped. I gotta finish pulling the engine, which it's got like just bolts threaded into it. None of them are tight. And the swing arm and the triple tree. And then we're putting it on the other frame. We're gonna have a runner tonight. I'm gonna show you guys our parts pile. The parts pile is severe. <laughs> it has grown significantly. This is why we enjoy doing stuff in a parking lot so much. You can just spread out all the things. It's so easy to find it, to see it. We will be transferring all this to this bike. And we still have a day tomorrow and the rest of the day today. And it is 3.45. The Nissan has came together. Daniel's got the fender swapped over, the door swapped over, the hood swapped over. What else do you have left on this Nissan? Uh, very little. Test drive. Test drive. We've got it tagged, registered, insured. Oh, and then. Do you want to film this because I'm driving the engine? Yeah. Why are you taking the engine that way? Because I need those long bolts. And now there's nothing else in there. Oh, and the other last thing is wheels. We didn't bring the wheels with us because we didn't want to. We had to grind out the holes. So yeah. we'll do that back at the shop as well as give it a bath. I think it's just sitting on the jack. Yeah. Please, thanks. My sign blew away earlier today and I have no idea where it went, but it just came back. I love it when that happens. It's like a lost puppy. That's the only thing it's touching. I was gonna also record it with a phone, but I didn't get the phone up in time to do it like that. That was easy. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> once, once it like went past the tipping point. Yeah. Beautiful. Got a roller. Yep. Well, we're about to not have a roller. <laughs> yeah, now the chain is attached to this so I can slide it all in the other bike without having to mess with any of that. Yeah, I can cram all 
right in there at one time. To make sure my chain is in there when I do that. Woohoo! Well, I got lots of triple tree and this rear stand, the center stand, which the other bike doesn't have, and I'm definitely installing. Yeah. Look at you. That's all right. There's going to be more.
This is Torque. He is the proud new owner of the Peugeot. We're so happy that it went to somebody that's going to enjoy it and knows how to ride it. It's a little cold natured. It'll get the going in a second. Hopefully. There we go. Super knowledgeable guy. Him and his dad travel all over to different swap meets. They do 30 to 40 so a year. And he goes with them. It's great to see kids in the hobby. They are gonna they're gonna be the people that keep this alive. <laughs> there he goes. He came back to tell us he forgot to turn the switch on. The dreaded time has come. It's time to pack up. Don't know if you can tell, but pretty much everybody's already left and it's mainly just us and Brad. This is the part that I hate, mainly because it takes so long. And after Barbara last weekend and this weekend, I'm just tired. I just want to go home and sleep, but we can't. We gotta load it all up. So here goes. We ended our live stream video number one so that we could eat lunch. We were getting really hungry. After lunch, we realized that a lot of the swap meat vendors had left. And we decided that we needed to pack up our stuff too because we had a lot of stuff that needed to be packed up. Daniel was pretty determined to get the Kawasaki running today, so we devised a plan. We decided that the easiest course of action would be to take all of our swap meet stuff back to the shop, then take the motorcycle to my parents' house where we could work on it in their garage where it would have really good light and audio. So that's what we did. This bike is lighter than the modern crotch rocket. I believe you. <laughs> that was a bad time to get it in the truck, guys. Because the back tire wasn't on yet. I was still holding the bike. So we called in reinforcements. My parents grabbed our swap meet trailer. I'm in the Jeep in the utility trailer and Daniel's over there getting gas with the Nissan and the load of motorcycles. It hits on that ether and kicks back. This missing footage is covered on our live stream video number two. Ready? Yeah. I've got this thing all put together and this front brake is super sticky and if you crack the bleeder it doesn't release so it's the caliper not the hose so I'm gonna pull this caliper off see if I can blow it apart and rebuild it got the caliper unbolted it won't even move it is stuck to the wheel got the pistons out you can see this side it's all rough and then the side that I've already cleaned is clean so I'm gonna make it all be clean and I'm gonna clean the other one just under my battery charger it was also not good and the inside of the caliper is also dirty so we're gonna make it all be happy I got the caliper rebuilt it is not leaking and it does work free so I can't show you that it free spins but it the wheel free spins the handle is super tight it only moves that much and it has great brakes releases applies it's perfect This is the EX500 from Barber. Y'all watched me build it in the live stream at the Northeast Georgia Swap Meet. 
And since I've brought it back, I've got all the covers and the seat and all that jazz on. I didn't bore y'all with watching that because this is a piece together deal that took me a very, very long time to get on here. So all these covers are trash. But the bike's mechanically sound. Um, got the brakes working, got the engine running good. The radiator was leaking, so I ordered one. So it has a new to me radiator. But this thing is solid. It's as good as it's gonna get. Um, put a new battery in it. It's, it's pretty good. So it's got shade over 9,000 miles on it. Somebody needs a good starter bike or a good bike to practice stunt stuff on or something like that. Here you go. So it is for sale. Um, we're gonna go ride it. Express from Barber is going to get parted out more than likely unless someone wants to mess with it. This one does turn over, does have compression. Something's broke in this kickstart assembly. It just free spins. This way free spins and so does this way, except that way spins the engine over. It's got compression. I don't know what's going on with that. Also, the blue one that I traded for the CB350 needed an oil cap, so I stole that. And among other things. This one does have a key. It's the only Express I've ever had that had a key, for what it's worth. But this one is for sale. If anyone needs parts or wants to buy it, hit me up. It needs to go away. This is a 79 Yamaha XS11 Special. This is the blue CB350 that was the sister to the race bike. This one is actually pretty good, even though the motor's trash. Um, I'm not sure what's wrong in the engine, but something's stuck stuck. And I don't think it's a rust issue, I think it's a broke parts issue. But we went down to McDonough and got another engine the night after the car show. So I have an engine for this, we're gonna fix it. Um, let me come over here. I did steal an intake boot for the race bike, but I have that on the parts engine, and it is stuck tight. I also got a big pair of channel locks on the sprocket and put it in high gear and attempted to spin it that way. No go. She's stuck stuck. But Brittany decided she wanted to keep this one, so we're going to keep it around for a little bit. And it has a kitty cat tail light. You cannot forget the kitty cat tail light. So with any luck, this one will be fixed this week. We just gotta put the engine in it and then button some small stuff up. Somebody you mentioned or asked about the Pacer wanted to see it. We haven't actually released the video on this, um, mainly because we're still working on getting that situated. But this is one of two Pacers.
Here's the other pacer that we picked up. And it's kind of funny because we actually got to go pick up a third pacer pretty soon. So that'll be a video that's upcoming. We're just not ready for that one yet. But that one is for sale if anyone wants it. Yeah, that one is for sale if anybody wants that one. This one is not for sale yet. This is going to be our little hot rod pacer. I love it. This is the motor we picked up in McDonough. This is the engine I'm going to put in the blue bike and it has a charging system for the race bike because I'm going to put it back on the street. One minute you're just sitting waiting in the drive through for food. The next minute somebody messaged you back on Marketplace and says, come get the motorcycle. Give me one second. So guess what we're doing? Going to get the motorcycle. I know you guys probably can't see, but this is a late night pickup. It's a cute little motorcycle. It's a Honda CB something. 400. 400. We're going to load it in the truck. Oh, it's got a updated headlight like the Harley ones. Oh, good. We got a free bike off Facebook Marketplace. What is this one? Um, It's a CB 400 or maybe a CM 400. I don't know. It's a 400 Honda twin. Um, this one's got a stuck engine and I'm fairly certain that it was laned out and cooked this piston because this carb is not installed all the way. Here, let's go like, if you look back this way, you can see the gap. So we're gonna try to fix this one or put an engine on it or whatever. It's a good bike. It's definitely worth fixing. It's got a lot of neat parts on it. So this may have a build video done on it, like on just this one, but we'll see. So, so far for the month of October that we've ended up with 11 bikes so far. Somebody said they wanted to see us do motorcycles like we do cars. We're doing motorcycles like we do cars. Congratulations. So this is the blue bike from Barber. We've talked about this briefly, but we're about to figure out what's wrong with it. I have another engine for it if we need it, but it won't kick over. And I just discovered that if I put it in neutral, I only have this much rotation of the output shaft. If I click it into the other gears, that rotation gets less, but... Oh, wait a minute, there's a neutral. I think that's actually a missing gear. Oh. Okay, so I think that whatever's wrong with this thing there's neutral. Pretty sure whatever's wrong with this is in the trans. We're gonna go try to kick it now. Or spin it with the kicker now. I need to come to this side. It may kick through now. Oh, yep. It does. So whatever's wrong with this one is in the trans. So we're gonna try to get this thing running. It may have just been stuck between gears or something. It's got no wall in it. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. The race bike also had no wall in it, so maybe this guy just stored his bikes like that. This is a bike that came from the same collection. Yes, that is a valid point that I did not make before. Let me see. I'm gonna get that other engine over here. It's got a ton of compression. Either that or it's, that's also not installed. All right, I'm gonna put oil in it. And we're just gonna start like we always do. I really thought this engine was stuck, like to the point that it couldn't be fixed. I.e. the go buy another engine. We even pulled Patrick to go with us. Did all that for nothing. That's okay, having an extra CB350 engine is not a problem. Not motorcycle oil in the motorcycle. No idea how much this holds. We're gonna start with that. That's weird. Got all to the bottom line, so we'll put a bit more in it and call it good. A precise measurement. It's now full. I think 
we're going to grab the jump box out of the truck and see if the electric start and all that jazz works on this one. Because if I don't have to kick it, I'm not going to. This one's got a ton of compression. I think it's as hard to kick as the race bike. Oh boy. This one has electric start though. Ah. So you can just hit the button. You don't have to use the kickers for like, just nostalgia on this one, I guess. I was thinking to switch on this large black button on the side covers for the electric start. Oh. I'm gonna get the jump box. Okay. Look and see what size battery box. You're taking this janky seat off. I gotta remount this seat anyway. Why? What are you gonna do different? Well, only one side of the mount is even attached. Oh. See, this side's attached with like wire. <laughs> so we're gonna fix that. What's the deal with the shock thing that looks like or the blue? This? Yeah. Somebody hardtailed it with like tractor parts. That's what I was saying. That doesn't. Yeah, there's supposed to be a shock yeah. there, and somebody has hardtailed it. Which I kind of like that. It's cool with the tractor implement part. <laughs> I was looking at that and I was like, that is not motorcycle. But I've seen it somewhere. I couldn't remember like where. You can't change it. We got a battery out of the free bike we went and picked up that I think is going to be the right size. Ah, yes. Perfect. Don't know any history on this bike. I feel like that there's some interesting history. So whoever built it was peculiar. But we will never know. Unless you guys know. Then yeah, you. unless you guys know. If anyone knows who built this or any any information at all, I'd love to have it. The guy came from where, Ohio? Yeah, yeah, I think he was from Ohio. So, up north. All I want to know is it has a sweet kitty cat toy. Like, that I cannot wait to see lit up. And these weird things. Yeah, those weird shock covers. Yes, I know I did the negative first. Yell at me if you want to, it's fine. The worst I can do is short it out. Okay. Key on. Way down there. Nope, oh, we have a light. We have a headlight. Do we have, oh, oh, oh. The kitty cat tail light. No, the kitty cat. I have to fix it. First order of business. No. 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 It's stuck. No kitty cat tail light. Oh. I kind of like those little bitty like orange things. Yeah, I do too. The other one's broken. Okay. Like said. There's a button over here that I think is going to be the starter. Well, that was uh, less than impressive. Add jump box juice. Okay, the motor is definitely not stuck. That yeah. was a complete goof on my part. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna install a card boot because I don't want to start this thing wide open. I have a parts motor that has card boots. Need the right hand if I'm looking. I stole a card boot off the motor from McDonough. I'm going to get a little spray silicone in there so I can have some lube to put this in. This stuff is wonderful for installing motorcycle carbs and or O-rings and anything else you need to like make me slick to install. I feel like there's softer like rubber products like only Titanic still. <laughs> I have to get a 
heat gun out. It's got a spot right here that's laid in slightly that is not helping me. carbs back in. I must have a pry bar. I think that's what we use pry bars in the Britain and motor truck cars. I also think most people are working with better carbs and better boots. Not me. Are you new boot goofing? I'm working with junk. You're not new boot goofing. Yes, somebody online's gonna yell at me about this too, and I don't care. If you wanna buy me new boots, send some. Look me up, that's Ready Garage. The side that I did not want to go in first is the side that wants to go in first. Hard as a rock. They are hard, yeah. Usually, when you get them started, they'll go the rest of the way, but not this one. Yeah, this is the only part of building bikes that I hate. Once you get the carbs snapped in, everything else is easy. That one, I spent like an hour trying to get the carbs snapped in. It would probably help if I didn't have like the most rotten, trashed carb boots known to man. This uh, boot that I just pulled off. So I got my spark tester on here. We're gonna bump this thing and see if we have sparkles. We do not have sparkles. We have a very, very noisy starter. We do have some wires here that are unplugged. What do these go to? That's a horn wire that's not relevant. What's this button do? I think that's the kill wire. Um, okay. Well, let's take the point cover off. You can come back over here. I'm going to take the cover off and look at the points. Turn the point back off. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to make sure we don't have some weird anomaly where it fires in this position. Okay, it doesn't even... It doesn't even have... Uh, Ignition in that position. Okay, it does still have points. It's not been converted. These points have been very hot. Alright, let's... Test light. You are number one with us. Unit number one. Unit number one. I'll show you the number one unit. 
New York. Okay, we have power. Points are stiff. We get power here. Oh, those points are open, so they're not going to have power. What are you checking for? Well, I should see a spark right here when I open these and I don't. We do have power to them. We don't. We've got power to them. So what, do they need to be like sanded? Okay, the coal does work. I scratched around on it and connected it. So yes, we need to possibly sand the points and go from there. Okay, so the points on the race bike are T-Rash. If this is how strong the spring's supposed to be, the ones on the race bike are uh, not. We're gonna sand these points and try again. As much as I don't like points and I like to swap everything to electronic ignition, you absolutely can work on points. Sand them, clean them, play with them. If you have electronic ignition and you lose the igniter or any of it, you're stuck. Those points right there are gapped wrong. I do believe. Yeah, they have too much gap. Yes, I'm doing this the wrong way. I know. We have a spark on that one now. Alright, I think this one needs more point gap also. Actually, that one looks okay. What are you looking at? What do you mean point the gap? The gap. So watch them open and close. The gap in between there is like... They have to actually close and make contact. There's a specification for the gap, but I don't have it, nor do I care. Okay. Go, go, juice. What? It's attaching this side paper, so I really like it. I don't know, I wish it was blue. Oh, good. The wire pulled out. There's a lot of like wiring, it's just kind of dangling everywhere. Just like the chopper. So the chopper's worse. Well, this should work if I ground it, it should. Okay, perfect. Juices. This might say something. Okay. Let's check as 
apartments. That one's nice and tight. Yeah, those are, oh, those are super trash. The gap is completely closed. And it does not appear to have hit the piston, so we're gonna put two new plugs in it. just wet that may look rough but they're exactly what I need yep those are what I need two new spark plugs Pretty sure this is supposed to have a do this. All right, so I'm trying to kick it because my jump box died. bad that I think the timing's way off on this one too. No. It was way off on the race bike. The same guy I did on. I'm gonna kick it one more time. Because I added some timing. We're gonna kick it that way a little bit so I can have a little more space. Have made you kick it. This is your bike. these rotten fuel lines and I'm gonna go get some gas call this uh, ba my battery charger the Brittany ripped the cords out of it <laughs> with the weed eater so now I've got jumper wires <laughs> this is the last battery charger I have that works look at this thing just look at it you can even read the gauge this is for the whole entire shop like there's that one and then we had a really nice one from uh, Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply and it died. It failed, yeah. And then we had a really big heavy vintage one and it's lasted it for a year. Finally kicked the bucket. So we're left with this garbage. Oh, and the 10 amp one that we got from your dad. Yeah. Of course he did tell us it didn't work when he gave it to us. So I guess the fact that it worked for a long time was just a win. So this is what we're working with and we have a full-fledged shop. Like there's customer car there. 
One over there, one on the other side. I thought count was good battery chargers, and it turns out that they really don't like just being hooked to stuff while you wind and wind and wind and wind and wind on it. Maybe if any of you guys have a suggestion of what you use for this kind of stuff, maybe like put it below in the comments. Yeah. We need something tough because all this other junk we bought don't get it. This is a tough piece of hose. I wish my battery charger was as tough as this piece of hose. <laughs> she does not want to come off of there. A razor blade would actually work better. I don't have one. There was another there in the Yeah, I know. I couldn't find it. Clear hose behind you. I'm sure all of y'all can yell at me about like 47 things that I'm doing right. But I'm gonna just make it run, guy. I wanna enjoy my stuff. And doing prettier fuel line or any of the other 47 things that all of the armchair mechanics on YouTube think that I should do does not make this bike run better. It makes it look better, does not make it run better. Use a razor blade to cut the hoses and cutters. Said someone. Okay. Now we just need some gasolina. You're not gonna like hose clamp those or whatever? No. I don't ever hose clamp this clear hose. It slides on there and stay on there. Hmm. Okay. My Harley's like that, the Chopper's like that, the Rebel's like that. Jeez. I rode to Key West like that. It was fine. <laughs> and that was not the thing that messed up. Nope, not at <laughs> all. See, that's what gets me. Everybody always fusses at me and tells me, you're not doing it right. But the things that I do aren't what break. It's like the just bad designs from engineers that don't need a job. Make sure my battery charger's working and then we're gonna run to the gas station. Yep, that is working. All right. Will it run? We got gas in it, fuel lines on. We made a mess, but we cleaned it up. I'd say that was running. So our parts motor from McDonough gifted us a car boot and this little tiny bolt with a washer behind it that goes in this hole. So I'm gonna fix this oil leak. I don't know who put silver tape over it. That was pretty good. Gotta give it to them. They hit it with silver tape. All that accomplished was not letting dirt daubers get in it. 
Okay, good. Well, it's still sold. <laughs> to you! You're the sucker! I'm not the sucker. He offered it to me. You're the sucker that took it. Mm. Taped up and everything. Well, that's fixed. This is the Honda CB350 that we picked up at Barber. Today, my goal is to get this engine out of here so we can replace it with the one that we picked up in McDonough near Summit. So this engine does run. The transmission is just wonky. So we are going to get it out of here, replace it with the other one, and hope that that one's good. Daniel felt of it, and it does seem good, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed that all the work that we do is for something. So here we go. This has been my first time really hands-on with a motorcycle. All the motorcycles that I've came across have already really been built or I just didn't have a chance to work on them. I really like this bike, so I guess I've kind of claimed it as mine. So I really just wanted to have all hands on deck to be able to say that I, I built most of it, helped build it. So I've got the engine pretty much ready to come out. Daniel's gonna help me get it actually out of there. There is one thing we're going to have to swap around. Okay. This cover. Why? Because I want that one for the race bike. I mean, I want this one for this bike, and I want that rough one for the race bike. Oh. Because it matches the better. We might switch this other cover too, which means we may have to get gaskets. I don't know. I'm not sure. Because this one has really nice coverage on it. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure somebody painted it. Yeah, I don't like the paint. Probably won't stay on this. Take a take a pair of pliers and bend the electrode out. I've screwed up more plugs by like flying on this part. By the gas yes. That's another reason I like the gap plugs. Okay. This should come out at this point. The only one you got left. Alright. Now we should just be able to wrestle this thing out. Wrestle. Pick up on it. Hold on, there's a crankcase vent. Oh, we broke the choke thing. What do you mean? Where? The little connector. That's annoying. The carbs weren't supposed to move from where they were. What do you mean? We broke the choke duty. Oh. Providing it works anyway. Oh. Ah, balls. We've got a tack drive. Uh, Philip says screwdriver. <laughs> We really should clean the other yeah. I was feeling pretty ambitious here. As you can tell, I decided to not wait on Daniel and start on the motor install myself, which for me did not go as planned in several different ways, unfortunately. But I gave it an honest effort. So I got excited and I decided to try to put the engine in here myself, which was fully okay until I realized that I put it on the wrong side and it's got to come in that side. 
So that was my screw up number one. Screw up number two was that I didn't realize that the engine mounts on the left and right side and the bottom are not existent. So that means that we have to take this back out again and swap the bottom half of the cases with the other motor that we pulled out. So here we go. What we may end up doing, since that other one runs so good, we may end up stealing gears out of this one to fix that one because we're going to have both of these took apart. After I just spent so much time cleaning that one. Well, the other one's clean. I've got the cover split on the CB350. Couldn't remember what it was for a second. And the problem is this shift fork moves freely. So this one ends up locking in gear and then when you shift the others, it ends up in two gears at one time. None of the gears appear to be chipped or anything. Everything looks okay. Just this is not supposed to like willy nilly move back and forth without turning the shift barrel thing. But it does. So we're gonna take this out and see if we can see exactly what's broke or missing or whatever. So is that the same similar thing when you like have a three speed like? When you hang them in two gears. gears. Yeah, similar. Or four speed. Whatever speed. Yeah, they're supposed to be. Yeah, this one's got a pin in there, and this one's got a pin in there that lines up with those little doohickeys, and this pin's missing. Is the pin in here somewhere? Maybe. I'm gonna look for it. It's How big is it? Yeah, I don't know what the backside looks like, but that pin, this one's missing. See the hole? Yep, pin is missing. If you look right here, you can see the little channel it's supposed to ride in. Put the camera on top, over, up, 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 around. There, see the hole? Yeah. No pin in the hole. Could have, came, could have ended up over here. I heard something fall when I flipped this over. I really don't want to flip it back over to make it fall the other way. Got to begin here. Theoretically, don't guess it has to be in here. I guess it could have like escaped or been missing for a minute. But I heard something fall, so I feel like it's doodling around in here somewhere. I heard it. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, that's a clip. Is that what you're looking for, though, right? Are you looking There's for There's a else? pin also. Uh oh. That's the clip. That's part of it. Oh, there it is. Got it. Wow, barely missed the hole. This is the pin. That's the oily. Hold on. That is the pin. It goes in this hole. I do not know how it escaped. Unless that little hair clip just doesn't hold. If I put that back, if I 
I put that back in there, that would fix the problem. I would just need to reinstall this. I'm gonna take a pair of pliers and pinch that so it'll have a little more tension. I don't want the light back right now, I'm oily. So what I think I figured out was these other two clips are in backwards. All three of them were, I think. This one, and go back to the first one. If you go back here to the first one, these that are installed in this direction pop out really easy. There's a hole through it, and I flipped this one around, and if any of y'all have done this before, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, that would be great. But this one I installed from the back side, and now it's in there firmly. It doesn't just fall out anymore. So... I'm thinking that they go that way and someone was in here before and got this twisted around. Because I can, I can literally take these with my finger and just do that. And I'm positive they're not supposed to be that easy to pull out. And if I flip it and put them in this way, you can actually hear an audible click when it goes. Well, I turned all these pins around. They slide through the other side. And now everything's clicked in tight and not going to fall back apart. You rotate the shift barrel. All of the forks move like they're supposed to. Which means when I put the transmission back together that everything will work. So this is the Pooch Twingle. It's a 250. I think it might be all state. It's the same thing. I'm not sure. I don't know that much about it. But we're going to build this one. So if anybody out there has a parts bike, I'd like to take two and make one. Um, preferably with an engine that hasn't been opened up because this one's missing a piston and some other stuff. Cylinder's probably trash. But we're looking for a parts bike. So ultimately what I would like to do, we don't know if this is a pre-60 bike or not, but there is an event called the Cross Country Chase and the Motorcycle Cannonball. They both require early bikes. So one is a pre-60 bike and the other is a pre-war bike. So like 30s, No, 40s. you are completely wrong about that. The Chase is 90 year, I think it's 90 year old bikes. It was, maybe it's 95 year old bike. Whatever it is, it's not pre-war. It's sometime in the mid thirties. You'd have to go look, it revolves every year. And the Chase is 1930 to 1960. So that's just an event that like we, it's on our radar and we want to do, but we have to find a bike for that first. And we're not gonna have the bike everyone else has that's pre-1960, because most of those guys are on like panheads and other I don't know, knuckleheads, Indians. They're on modern-ish bikes. They're just old. And we're looking for like, we can't afford any of that. So we're gonna end up with like- Budget friendly. Yeah, we're gonna end up with the cheapest bike that is pre-1960 and we're gonna go cross country. Or she's gonna go cross country on it. So the little Yamaha, we thought the motor was stuck in it, but the kicker doesn't do anything. And then we clicked the thing in gear and the motor does spin over. Um, the crankshaft's got some up and down play in it. So it needs crank bearings at a minimum. But we're gonna figure this one out. We're gonna build the engine on it. Um, I think John's gonna end up with this one. So, yay. We're gonna make it run and at least like yard drive for him though. So we're gonna go through this one. Stay tuned for that. So we just got back with our trade deal. Well, actually we didn't just, got, didn't just get back. We like ate dinner and then now we came outside to work on it. But Daniel's already got it going before I could finish putting up dinner. And I just tongue tied all of that. All I did was put a battery in it, or I put the boost box on it, and then I gave her one little kick, and now it's not going to start. Now it needs gas. Probably. He Probably ran it all out. This is the, what, 11th bike? Yeah. 
in October so far. Loving bike, motorcycle, whatever. Two-wheeled object. I kind of like this hill toe shifter. Oh. This is an odd thing. It's like a moped, but it's an off-road moped. <laughs> I want to take it to our property and like blast it through the woods. Wee! These things actually bring okay money. This one's got the sweet deal here too, where you can pull this up and then you can like put the handlebar down. You turn it to the side and you can lay it flat. Huh. What was that for? To get through trees? Like, what was the... No, to, like, store it. Oh. Interesting. I'm excited about this. I just need to order another battery. Yay. Yay. We're very battery poor right now, and we don't even have a battery charger because all, like, three of them have died. So, We're gonna work on that tonight. It's a problem. We're gonna play. Can we fix our battery charger? It's very hard to run a shop and not have a battery charger. Yeah. Irregardless of like our project stuff and stuff we work on at night, it's very hard to run a shop during the day without a battery charger. It's very hard to do this stuff at night either. Like it's well, hard yeah, to do. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so you gonna take this over our property and like? take it to the woods. You're gonna dress up like a spooky ghost and I'm gonna go booing around. No, you're supposed to dress up as a sexy ghost. Remember the thing? Sexies. Sexy ghost. <laughs> it's like a regular ghost, but sexy. <laughs> I'm gonna dress up as a sexy ghost and ride this little scooter around and haunt the woods. <laughs> <laughs> but sexy. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually like really cool light right now too because it's like the sun setting. Yeah. We're on our way to get pick up bike number 13 for October. So off our bikes that was what nine nine and then we picked up a free bike which was number 10 and then number 11 was the orange trail 90 that we traded a four wheeler from. So this is 12, which is also another free bike. And it's just a parts bike that's going to bring it down for a game. Go ahead. But Still a bike. 12 bikes for the month of October. That's pretty wild. That's all for now. Thank you guys for watching.